Hey everybody, I'm Carl Lanning, Braddock's River Charter School with This Week in History, specifically the week of October the 18th through 24th. Well, you may remember last week, I mentioned these uh, two gold discs. And these are two pretty amazing gold discs, as well as their journey so far. But the connection I wanted to make with them was with this man. On October 18th of 1926, Chuck Berry was born. Though his personal and professional life definitely had its ups and downs, there is no way anybody can argue with this man's influence on music. You know, you cannot say that one person alone created the genre of rock and roll, but if you had to pick one, it'd probably have to be Chuck Berry. You know, John Lennon once said that uh, if you tried to give rock and roll another name, you might call it Chuck Berry. I think he was dead on. The greatest tribute that Berry may have ever received it was to be included on the two Voyager gold discs that I showed you earlier. They were attached to the side of the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 space probes, which were launched in 1977. Now, these are audio-visual discs that carry uh, photos of the Earth, greetings in 55 languages, various sounds of the Earth, and 28 selections of music. Now, all but three of them are either traditional folk music from various cultures or classical. The remaining three are an acoustic blues piece by Blind Willie Johnson, a jazz piece by Louis Armstrong, and Chuck Berry's Johnny Be Good. And I tell you, I hope that if these are ever found, that whoever finds them either has a record player or figures out how to invent one, because <laughs> they, they need to hear Chuck. They need to hear the rest too, but they really need to hear Chuck. The Voyager 1, by the way, is the most distant man-made object from the Earth. It left our solar system and entered interstellar space in 2012. So, Chuck Berry and the Golden Records. On October 22nd of 1926, the event that is believed to have caused the death of Harry Houdini occurred. Houdini, the renowned escape artist, was 52 years old was relaxing on a couch as a man painted his portrait. Uh, the artist had brought a friend named Whitehead with him to, uh, along with him, uh, while he was doing the painting. Uh, now, Houdini had kept himself in magnificent physical condition his entire life as his escapes required that he had to. Now, what Whitehead did was ask him if it were true that he could resist a punch to the abdomen pretty much of, of any force. This was something that Houdini would do on stage from time to time, is invite people up and ask him to do just exactly that. So Houdini said it was true. Whitehead then very abruptly delivered four or five well-directed blows into Houdini's stomach. Now, Houdini had not had a chance to prepare himself uh, and appeared to be in considerable pain. Now, later that evening, he complained of discomfort and stomach cramps, which only got worse over the next few days. Prior to his last performance, he developed a very high fever and complained of severe pain, but insisted on continuing the performance. He collapsed as the curtain went down that evening. Houdini was rushed to the hospital, and the doctors removed his appendix. But it was found that it had ruptured several days earlier. It had already poisoned his insides. Uh, he died a few days later on Halloween. So, the event leading up to the death of Houdini. On October 24th of 1601, Tycho Brahe died. There's good old Tycho. He was a renowned astronomer among, amongst other pursuits. Uh, his main contribution was his fanatical devotion to making his ast ast astronomical observations uh, as mathematically precise as possible. Now, he was wrong in a lot of ways about the movement of the stars and planets, uh, but modern astronomers still marvel at the level of accuracy that he was able to achieve without even the use of the not-yet-invented telescope. Now, Bry was brilliant, but he was also quarrelsome, difficult, and he liked to drink a lot. Uh, and his heavy drinking is likely what got him into an argument with a fellow student uh, in university at the age of 20. The argument was over which one of them was the better mathematician. Naturally, there was only one way to solve this debate. Swords. 
uh, they engage into a sword fight to see who was the best mathematician. The, uh, in the course of the duel, Brahe got a uh, scratch across his forehead and the fleshy end of his nose was removed. Now, Brahe was from a wealthy family, uh, apparently had a prosthetic made of brass to cover uh, his wound that he wore for the rest of his life. So, Taisho Brahe. Finally, according to Bishop Usher, James Usher, the Archbishop of Ireland, as it appeared in his book, The Annals. Uh, the bishop, by the way, was a very well-read, uh, very highly educated man. He calculated that the universe was created at exactly 6 p.m. on October 22nd of 4004 B.C. Now, Usher was not the only person to attempt to do this. A number of others had uh, Isaac Newton amongst them. Uh, basically, his book, The Annals, he started out as sort of a, uh, with known dates, and then worked as a genealogy going backwards through the Old Testament. Uh, no matter how you may feel about it, Usher's work is truly an amazing piece of scholarship, and was considered the source for several centuries. Well, that's all we have for you for this week, but next week, we will get into this man's war with his own fame. I'm Carl Lanning, Browser Charter School, and we look forward to seeing you right here next week.